I know. I know. That's nice. I called to order the uh, Heritage Preservation Board meeting from November 2nd, 2015. May we have a call to order and roll call, please? Chairman Root? Here. Mr. Bolton? Here. Ms. Kalanos? Here. Ms. Sardulis? Here. Is there an introduction to be made? Yes, um, we have with us uh, the new um, planning and zoning coordinator, Kim um, Yothers, who's going to be staff to this board for the secretarial duties. She'll also be doing your minutes going forward. Um, and we're just very happy to have her in the planning department. Welcome, Kim. Thank you. Uh, moving on to uh, the approval of the minutes from 9-14-2015. I actually would like to move this to later in the agenda because we have so many people here and I know that we're gonna have some discussion on those minutes. So, um, can we go ahead and have a quasi judicial announcement and swearing in the speakers? Okay. In the matters before the Tarpon Springs Heritage Preservation Board are quasi judicial in nature. In a quasi judicial proceeding, the board's function is to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the Tarpon Springs Code of Ordinances. This is a legal decision regarding the application before the board. The board may only consider evidence that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues arising from the application in the applicable code sections. If the evidence demonstrates that the applicant has met the criteria established in the code of ordinances, the board is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. If the evidence demonstrates that the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established by the board of commissioners and the code of ordinances, then the Heritage Preservation Board is required by law to find against the applicant. Any and all persons providing testimony at this hearing are required to do so under oath. All persons testifying at this hearing must give their name, address, and must indicate whether or not they have been sworn for the record prior to proceeding with their testimony. All testimony and questioning at this hear hearing must address matters that are relevant and material to the issues under consideration based on the criteria established in the Tarpon Springs Code of Ordinances. The following is the established procedure which will be followed at this quasi-judicial hearing. First, city staff will prevent, present its testimony and evidence regarding the application. The applicant will have an opportunity to ask questions and cross-examine the city staff and any city witnesses. Next, the applicant will then have the opportunity to present their testimony and evidence. The city will have the opportunity to cross-examine the applicant and any of the applicant's witnesses. Third, members of the public opposing the application will be given, given the opportunity to present their testimony and each person will be given two minutes to provide their testimony and evidence. Fourth, members of the public in support of the application will be given the opportunity to provide their testimony and evidence, again, with time limited to two minutes. The applicant may present any rebuttal testimony and evidence in a closing statement for summary, and the city will have the opportunity to do the same. Then the chairperson, chairperson will close the hearing for consideration by the board. I'm gonna ask anybody that desires to speak at this evening's meeting to please stand and raise your right hand. You all promise to tell the truth on the matters before the Heritage Preservation Board <laughs> Sorry, this evening. All right. Thank you. When you do come to the podium, it's in the back corner over there. Please make sure you say your name, your address, and indicate that you've taken the oath. Thank you. We'll go on to an old business update on CA 15 70 for at 120 Reed Street. Michelle Orton principal planner for the city of Turpin Springs. Um, I oh. can't hear you. I'm, I'm having some hearing issues. I Could you speak you louder? So. Or Mark, turn the mic up. Okay. Michelle Orton, principal planner for the city of Turpin Springs. This case was brought before the board September 14th, 2015. At that time, they were approved for the demolition and the certificate of approval for 120 Reed Street. At that time, HPB requested that they return with the list of the materials and style before per, per, uh, sorry, before permitting. The applica applicant has submitted to staff a list of the materials that they will be using on this single family structure. Included in the submittal um, was also 
additional information that they presented um, to staff. And that's staff's response <laughs> to what was presented to them. And can you please uh, provide a list of the materials that, they will, that they're proposing to use? The list of materials that they have is exterior siding, gable ends, vertical siding, exterior walls, vertical siding, the roof is Timberline HD Asphalt Shingle Slate. The windows, Pella Vinyl DBL or Double Hung. The entry door is Three Light Wood. The garage, Wood Grain Raised Panel Steel. And then what I also have in here is the approved um, proposal for the single family structure. They also submitted at that time a new um, style. They wanted to remove the second story and also move the garage to the rear of the building and also a tree survey. At this time, um, with uh, city attorney approval, they will need to return to HPB on the removal of the second story and the garage. So all we're referring to or looking at today is the materials being used. Um, I was going to comment on that. The other thing I would ask is since we wound up having to do the uh, review of the assessment that would normally be in a staff report because the staff report is submitted was for um, renovation as opposed to new construction, um, yeah. we would ask that it be redone and resubmitted with this new application so we have that documentation because it you know, it's not documented anywhere at this point. Okay. Um, the, the other thing, um, so you've gone to the city attorney. That was one thing I was going to ask our attorney. There is no, I didn't find any guidelines that if, some, if an applicant has had new construction approved, there's not like guidelines for major modifications for that new structure, which I would consider removing a second story and moving a garage as being very major. Well, we cannot talk about that tonight because because it is such a large modification, mm -hmm. it's required to be advertised and it's required to go out 200 feet. Mm -hmm. to, yeah, to anything that's in a circumference from 200 feet of 120 Reed Street. So it's, and, it, it, in and essence. it has to be within a certain period of time and neither the time before this meeting was sufficient to have that advertised. Mm -hmm. So it'll have to go on the next, out, out for the that's next right. one. So but it, it's considered as, as basically a new submittal then? Because I didn't see anything in it's our not guidelines. A, it's not a new submittal because you already have the basis of the application. Mm -hmm. um, it is a modification of the previously approved application. All right. Well, I would ask that the staff report then be documented as it was, re as it was, um, well, you might as well. When it, is, when it is submitted as a modification application, then a staff report will be done. Okay. That's fantastic. All right. So um, since we don't really have the full design, does it make sense to look at windows and treatments? We could do that all at once then. That would be up to the board. Um, I think it would be beneficial to the applicant for us to at least look at it so that we're not, I mean, if there was something crazy we saw that we wanted to maybe have them change before they got before us and then had to do it again, this would be a good time to look at it so that we don't. Are we allowed to, have to review have and have discussion again. prior to them? I didn't think we about, did that. You, yeah, you no. cannot okay. talk about All the right. second story and you cannot talk about the garage because you have to give the public the opportunity to come and see. Agreed, on. but now we're talking about windows and doors and, 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 and trim. So my comment was we should probably wait to do that until after we have an approved design. That, can be, yeah, that does not, the windows and doors and some of the style, st mm -hmm. style um, aspects of this project uh, don't require advertising. So that you could discuss. Without a vote? If we discuss it, don't we have to vote on it? I, the, it's not one that requires advertising. So if, whether you vote on it or not. Okay, let me rephrase that. If we have the discussion, are we required to have the vote? You know, you can always table it. I mean, you can start to talk about the style and design and then table okay. the vote for the next meeting. If All right. You well, feel you need then, more then information then on it. 
In that case, um, we might as well have discussion so that the applicant knows the direction of the opinion of the board. Okay. So, applicant testimony. Desiree Guinness, 120 Reed Street, Tarpon Springs, Florida, and I have been sworn. Um, so you have the what we the what we want to use. Um, this is the general contractor that is going to be working with us. Um, he can go over more and explain them more to you guys. Um, I just want to say that when I went to go turn this application in, I had called because I had changed something some things around for budget wise and when I called the staff they didn't know the answer right away so she went and talked to another staff member and they said that I did not need a new application that is why there's not a new application I had plenty of time to submit a new application but they told me it was not needed to go on with the materials so that's why you don't have an application in front of you I understand I have to be pushed back till December 7th for that but that's the reason why you don't have an application, or that's why you don't have a new application and those cards weren't sent out. Well, we do have an, a, a very new staff set and uh, they're, I can see now they're gonna be very good, so let's be patient with them. I know, but it just pushes me back I, I for building time. I, I, I understand that, however, um, this, there was significant changes to the plan and we have to abide by our guidelines. I understand. I'm just saying that's why I don't have a new application. Yeah, it's not a ding on you. Not to worry. Okay. And okay. we're sorry Talk for your inconvenience. Name's Todd Emmons. Address is 12537 Fifth Isle, Hudson, Florida. Um, I'm a general contractor and designer. And if you have any questions on the different materials that we're going to build with, Feel free to ask. Is all of this wood siding or is any of it hardy board? It's hardy board siding, yeah, for the durability, longevity. So it's all hardy board, it just is described here as vertical, unless I skip something up here. So this is hardy board? Yes. No, I do not. Is there some way that he might be able to be given a copy of the guidelines of the historic district? I thought it was I can online. Email those to him. It's online? Yeah, I thought it was online. Okay. I can also On email the them. Because I think that's a, a very strong point that you need to look at mm -hmm. is the ver vertical compared to the horizontal siding. Okay.
Well, I think probably once you look into the guidelines mm -hmm. of some of the historic housing in Tarpon Springs, that will give you some ideas of maybe um, working towards the historic flavor of the, the way that Tarpon Springs uh, bungalows are. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's my suggestion. <laughs> Can you tell me on the front door what, well, I mean, what's the difference um, on, on? To be honest with you, this mm -hmm. is more of a modern looking front door mm -hmm. compared to some of the historic doors okay. um, throughout the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> it's just a style just difference. A style. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. But they're still wood doors, correct? Right. Yeah. Correct. I just want to know how this, because this is kind of the statement that I go with in additions and construction says, new construction will occur as part of a redevelopment and infill development. New construction should be a product of its own time, but complement the architectural style of the historic district. So I wouldn't want to see them create something they're trying to mimic it and make it look like it's historic, but yet that it should just complement. I don't think it has to be exactly like historic. No, and it shouldn't, but if, if there's a design continuum, okay. having something that fits with that is that appropriate, you know, that, okay, I, I think that at this point I'd like to see a motion to um, defer the rest of this discussion until after we have uh, the application for the new design. A motion to defer. Second. May we uh, have a vote? Ms. Sardoulis? Yes. Ms. Colinas? Yes. Mr. Bolton? Yes. Ms. Root? Yes. Thank you. All right, moving on to new business, we're going to have uh, uh, discuss case 15-84 um, uh, for 102-104 East Tarpon Avenue. The next case is case number 15-84, 102 through 104 East Tarpon Avenue. This is a contributing structure in the downtown area. The applicant is requesting to replace um, two non-original doors with pairs of three by seven doors as well as transforms above and the side glass panels. This property um, is a masonry vernacular in the downtown area and it was built in 1914. It's in the Mears building. Um, it's a two-story commercial brick building. This um, building, the it has four units. The other two units have already been approved by HPB for the, the doors and the windows. The applicant noticed that this was very pleasing and it worked out great that they are re now requesting that the additional two units have the same uh, doors and windows. Uh, you've got um, all the backup material that they have here uh, copies of the doors and windows that they are requesting. This is not in an archaeological site. I've uh, attached that also uh, with the paperwork. And that's about it with staff's report. If you have any questions, it does meet the, um, the state interior guidelines and it does meet the um, historic preservation um, guidelines. I didn't know if you wanted us to go through every single question and answer on that. I can if you'd like, but it does meet those. No, no, I think your summary was sufficient. Is the board okay. in agreement? Is there any area that you would like to see emphasized or discussed? Okay. Um, 
and staff does recommend approval. And do you tender your report into evidence for the purposes of today's hearing? Yes, I do. Thank you. Is there anything to submit into evidence? Is that what? The report. Okay, the entire report. All right. Um, all right, should we hear from the applicant? She, I'm, excuse I'm me, you need to speak in the. Yes. Are you the applicant? Uh, I'm Anthony the agent for uh, Michael Lindell. Yes. We do have her paperwork. Oh, okay. Yes. And the, pa please go the, in there. the paperwork for that's in there. Yes, we do. Name and address. Uh, Sherry Wendt. And I was here before when we did the rest of the building. And I, I, I think everyone will agree that it looks great. So that convinced Excuse me, that needed... before you go any farther, can oh, you please state your name, your address, and that address. you've been sworn in? OK, Sherry Went. Address? At 631 Eunice Drive in Tarpon Springs. And that you've been sworn in. And I've been sworn in. Thank you. OK, thank you. Um, I, I just wanted to thank you that it, you allowed us to do it before, and it was wonderful. So, and, and as you'll see tonight, we're going to do some more. So that was the only reason I asked to speak. I just appreciate it. We all appreciate it. Okay. Any comments, questions? I just have one, uh, two questions. The, what we're looking at, the door that's to the residence upstairs and like there's a business in there, like uh, is that being done too or just no, the glass right now? We need to have it for the record. Yeah. Yes, yeah. please. I'll re-ask for the okay. so that it's on the record. The the small door on the side. Correct. I was asking if you were planning to do any work on that section of the building. And and, in your, and when you say on the side, are you referring to the one that's on the street facing Tarpon Avenue? Correct. Yes, at, at the moment that is not part of the renovation or the request, although the, the owner is considering to come back at some point. I'm trying to get him to paint the building and take out the growing plants and some of the brick. So I, I'm hoping that will come and we're looking at that door trying to decide. I believe that my thought would be to leave it wood, but maybe improve its appearance rather than turn it over to the, to the glass section. Uh, the second question I had you briefly alluded to was the top facade of the building has plants growing out yes, of the brick does. and that's um, going to be costly. We'd love to see him oh, present so. something I'm to restore that and keep it before he's coming to us saying we have to lose it. No, he's a slow mover, but okay. he's moving. So, I mean, I'm encouraging that. He wanted to do the glass first and that's really the most expensive part. Mm -hmm. um, and we've also been having difficulty getting painting contractors, for me, a painting contractor who has the scaffolding and really wants to do the job, I think I've got someone and then they decide no. So we're working on that too. But yes, that's definitely a priority. Any other questions? Sure. I don't have any questions. All right. Um, is there anyone here from the public who would like to, oh, I'm sorry, city gets an opportunity for cross. Would you like to say anything no, in addition? All right, is there anyone from um, the public who would like to make a statement against making this modification? Is there anyone from the public who would like to speak in favor of this application? Uh, I would. You've, you've kind of closed out. Do you need a rebuttal period? Rebuttal? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that since there's no comments, you probably don't need that. I'm hoping that city will go forward with the So no rebuttals needed. Um, does the city have any statement they'd like to make with no. this? Okay, yeah. very good. Um, let's, uh, I'd like to hear a motion. 
regarding approval of this application. I make a motion to approve the application. I'll second. May we have a vote? Ms. Sargulis? Yes. Ms. Palianos? Yes. Mr. Bolton? Yes. Ms. Ruth? Yes. Ruth? All right. Moving on, we're going to discuss uh, case 15-88 for 119 South Spring Boulevard. Again, as he said, this is for 119 South Spring Boulevard. It is a contributing structure. The applicant is requesting an addition, a second floor for a 120 square foot master bathroom. The property is um, a two-story residence, has a hipped roof and a front gable, one-story screen porch that wraps the northeast corner. The home was built in 1940 during the Depression New Deal era, representing an example of the residential architecture in Tarpon Springs at that time. The applicant uh, has submitted the uh, drawings, and I do need to explain these just, to, just for a minute. You have attachment B and attachment C. Right. Neither one of these is exactly what's going on here. What's happening is, on the, well, what you're looking at, on the left side, they are adding the 120 square foot master bathroom on both the attachment B and C. There will be none of the deck <laughs> that is shown here. There will be none of the um, French doors in the rear. Uh, the only thing that they are requesting at this time is the 120 square foot um, master bathroom and on exhibit B, is it B or C for the roof? Um, let me see which one I have. For the roof, they are the one that <laughs> conforms to everything else. I'm sorry, let me get that correct number here. Um, the existing roof line is C <coughs> because that conforms with the roof that's there right now. B does not. They were given these plans by the architect saying, look at what you can do with your property. <laughs> and then they picked and uh, chose what they are going to use. The, the second story is in the rear of the property and it is in that little alcove that's in the back. The staff has no problem with this. They rec we recommend approval except for the window on the second story. It is a large picture window. The other windows shown are double hung windows in the rear. So that is our only condition that we have um, a window that matches what's to the side and rear of the existing building. It's a 120 square foot, which I've said before, you have a survey to show exactly where that's located in your, in your uh, packets, showing where that proposed addition will be. Staff, as I said, recommends approval on the addition, has a condition that the window be changed to meet side and rear windows. So the overhang, the cantilever, Will there be posts? None of that will be there. There will be no posts? There will be posts on the- And then how the they're board. anchored? Pardon me? How are they anchored? I mean, do they go all the way to the ground? Is there any sort of- uh, You need to ask the applicant. All right. Um, yeah, I, my comment on this, app, on this application was it was very difficult to figure out what they were asking for. Start at this end. Athena, do you have any? Oh, do you have anything you want before we go into the applicant part? Um, for the staff? I will reserve some questions for the applicant, just okay. for clarification. I, I think I understand it, but I thinking is not good enough. <laughs> anything for staff? I have something for staff. Okay. Um, not for staff. I understand the way they're describing it. Okay. For staff? Is any of the 
windows or facade facing the street are visible from the street? None of them. Um, from the back. This is all in the rear. Just yes, but confirm. it's visible from the street in the back since now the, the property owner, Chabine, has basically taken everything out. Pardon me? It's, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. The neighbor who owns the property at 127 South Spring and 111 Lemon Street has basically denuded those two properties. Okay. And so it's, it's you know, it's, it's visible. Mm -hmm. From Lemon now. Okay. All right. Applicant, please take the stand. Elizabeth Parker, 119 South Spring Boulevard. I have been sworn. Thank you. Proceed. So we, we bought this house last year in May, and we have, since we started working on it, it required some work. We have decided more and more that we don't want to change things. We like the original intent of the house. We like how the front door has a back door, the same shotgun kind of, so you can get a breeze coming through. And we've thought about how we can live in this house comfortably with three girls and really tiny bathrooms with and this is the minimal of addition that we've come down to we, our roof is the flat roof so that it doesn't that roof is 75 years old and it's nice and shiny so we don't want to mar it we are planning on putting the same kind of post that's in the front of the house on our porches on the back corner, one post, all the way to the ground. It needs some wood on top of whatever they do to make it secure. Tiling. We wanted to have light in, we wanted it to be a light space, which is why we asked for the picture window. However, if you don't want the picture window, we have an alternate, and I believe I sent it in to Nursa, did I? Yes, they are the same as the existing double, double hung windows. We have no original windows on our house. Right now, the ones in the front are double paned, and there is a, they've leaked, and so there's a film, there's a little, it's not easy, you can't see through them. Well. Just as a comment that in the future we need a set of plans that we can actually decipher what you're doing. Right now we've got some of this and some of that and we don't have any one thing that we can point to and say yes is approved, which makes our documentation trail very, very difficult. So I guess my, my question before we go any further on this is, um, is it possible to request a set of documents, um, contingent, and, you know, set of drawings that really reflect what's going to be done? The, the applicant is working with an architecture, and these are the plans that were given to them. They, uh, because of the cost, they requested and asked if it was all right for them to present the case themselves. And so staff allowed that. Um, and they didn't have exactly what they were going to do. He had given them several drawings, and none of them had exactly what they wanted. And that's why we don't have any, any plans. And she just wanted to discuss this and bring this case before you herself. OK, well, we, can't, we like. can't discuss something without making a we can. I guess we can table it, or we, can, we make a decision on it. We're not allowed to just casually discuss things. I understand for, uh, that. Okay, I'm, and I'm just saying for, for guidelines going forward, we have a documentation real headache here with regards to, you know, uh, part, of, part of drawing B and part of these two pieces of drawing C and, oh, by the way, we're not doing anything that's on this part or that part. So um, 
in the future, uh, having something that's much cleaner, cleaner makes our long-term documentation path much, much easier. Um, okay, we'll go for questions for the applicant, Athena. Yeah, that's like a nightmare with leaves and... Right, okay, so the flat roof is um, what you're planning for your extension. Yes, it goes into, it does the least impact on the roof and it requires that we have our bathroom sloped so our ceiling is slightly lower and yet we're willing to do that for the... Okay, and um, the roofing material Sorry, We're planning on it. using shingles, architectural shingles. Okay. That's all I have. Phyllis? Um, I, can, I can pretty well understand what we have here. Um, there is not going to actually be a porch, though, on the bottom side? No. Okay. And the you say there's going to be a post here to hold up the, yes. I mean, what's gonna hold up the, the 12, 120 square feet? That will be a post, yes. And it will tie into the house. Will there, I, uh, actually, that's, is that you? Will there, will there be two posts? Yes. Okay, one at either side of the yes. cantilever. So down below it, there'll yes. be no door or anything? Correct. Okay. Okay, thank you. I think I pretty much understand what you're trying to accomplish. I am wondering if um, just in the past we've discussed this a lot that before an application comes to us, there should be an example of the window that's being used, an example of materials, and this has none of that. So I, I understand what Chairman Root was saying about understanding where things are gonna be, but there's no example of what window's gonna be used, what shingle's gonna be used, what siding is gonna be used to match, and that's you not your, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not chastising you on that, I'm just, wondering, it's frustrating that this kind of application is still coming before us without those things in it. And an applicant should know before they come to us that those things are needed. Is that not, still not being communicated to applicants that they need that in their packets? Yes, it was communicated to the applicant and I thought she was going to bring that tonight. Um, okay. Do you want us to bring the piece of wood? Normally, I don't know what the, the board will do, but normally the staff sh should have communicated that there should be the manufacturing, what the window is gonna be, what it's like, and a, mm -hmm. like a little brochure or a picture of that, maybe a screenshot offline so we can see that. Mm -hmm. A sample of the shingle, same thing, doesn't have to be the material itself, but a screenshot of the, the brochure, or it's just as, that's the standard we're trying to get, but we want applicants to know that before they get before us, because then it's not fair if that wasn't communicated to you. So I'm just trying to clarify that that is getting communicated to applicants before they get before us, where then it's just not fair to them when we start asking for stuff that they didn't know to bring. Ms. Orton did um, ask me to get a piece of wood, and I called um, five different wood lumber yards, and they don't, I'm planning on using pine because that's what is originally on there. Um, they have cedar, and I have to order the pine in um, a large quantity, which I wasn't planning on doing for you, sorry. <laughs> but um, that's, the wood is what you see on there. It's one by 10 beveled, and 
You have a screenshot of shot of Windows, don't you? I didn't see them. I believe. Uh, I think there's, there's a testimony link. earlier that the, the windows that they're putting on are the same windows that have been on the house because the windows have already been replaced on the home. She didn't submit that for some reason. It didn't get printed I've in your packet. So I'm okay. sorry about that. That's fine. Okay. And those are the existing windows. They were Anderson windows yeah. and they were double hung. It says okay. Anderson picture window there. All right. Um, is, I didn't see anything showing the side view. Are there windows on the side? Or is it just straight wall? Uh, straight wall. Staff has requested, um, is you're, you're requesting double hungs or some sort of? I am requesting that they, yes, double hung and that they are similar to the existing side and front since those are the original windows or the liking of the original windows okay. instead of the large picture window. And is that just for the large window? They can have the smaller picture window? It, it's for the windows in the rear. Both of those need to be similar. That, to that smaller side. one is awfully small for a double hung. Were you putting both of those or just the one? Well, the alternative I have if, after you right. said you um, didn't approve those windows, was for two of the double hung windows right. in the back. That's Exactly. Instead of, instead of two picture windows, it's two double Correct. hungs. So if you look at the house, I think there are four windows across this. There's back, four in the rear, and then it'll be an additional two. Yeah, so it'll be six windows across the back. Also, uh, Anderson, yeah. your concept? I'm going to read the notes I've taken during this discussion. Is that all right? We have a 120 square foot cantilevered addition as shown in attachments B and C. Uh, we have no deck addition. We have uh, the applicant wants a flat roof per attachment C. There will be two posts to support the cantilever. There will be no new French doors as shown on attachment B and C. Only, the only windows that are being um, installed are the new windows for the addition. And those will be two double hung windows on the back, um, also Anderson, and I'd probably recommend we let staff have approval on that. Um, there will be no, um, I don't know what you call this part, the little porch roof. The porch, not a portico, not a. I don't, is there an architect here? Do you know what this is called? The curtain part? I'll just call it a porch roof, as shown. And there are no windows on the side of addition. That's just a st straight wall. And applicant plans for was a one by 10 inch beveled pine for siding. Is that complete, the summary? Yes. Did I catch everything? Well, guess what a motion would need to contain? Do you want to try it? <laughs> I, I wrote it, I wrote it's it down. Before, here, so. before you move to the motion, you have to ask for the public comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Thank you very much. I forgot about that. Um, well, does the city have any additional commentary? No. Okay. Um, is there anyone here to speak against this modification? Is there anyone here from the public to speak for this modification? Uh, Todd Eckhouse, uh, 103 South Spring Boulevard. The subject property is a neighbor of mine, uh, two houses away. 
and I just want to stand in favor of it. Uh, I think what they're doing is reasonable, um, and um, I pretty well understood what they were going to do, so I'm in favor of it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is there? Um, does the applicant have anything further to state regarding this? No. no? Okay. City, anything further? No. No. Okay. Um, I'd like to close that and have a discussion with the board. I think we have to speak into the mics at this okay. point. I'm hoping there's some way possible that we can propose a motion <laughs> that yeah. contains all the information as we understand it this evening from the applicant. I, I have written that down. If somebody would want to make a motion like that, they could read those elements. I will make a motion to approve the application with all of these contained elements. Um, 120 square foot addition as shown in the plan will be no deck addition from, from our understanding. There's a flat roof constructed per attachment C. Two posts will support the cantilever. How do you pronounce that? Cantilever. Cantilever, okay. Uh, there are no new French doors as shown on attachments B and C. Only windows are new windows for the addition and we have agreed they would be two double hung windows in the back for that staff has approved. Uh, there is no porch roof as shown in the attachments and no windows are, in, are on the side of the addition. Uh, the wood will be one by 10 inch beveled pine for siding. And I believe I mentioned all the um, elements that need to be in the design and the construction. Uh, so I'm making a motion to move forward and approve this application. A second. Uh, I would Ms. like Sarko to was, oh, sorry. clarify that the, the windows would be subject to staff approval. May we call okay. for a vote? Ms. Sardoulis? Yes. Ms. Colianos? Yes. Mr. Boltz? Yes. Ms. Root? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, we're going to now hear uh, case 15 90 for 103 East Tarpon Avenue. This is 101 East Tarpon Avenue. It also is a contributing structure. The applicant is requesting a replacement of two of the non-original doors with pairs of three by seven doors, as well as the transforms above and the side glass panels. This is, um, this property is, was built in the late 1890s and it housed a drugstore and also uses the Tarpon Springs Post Office for a few years. From 1918 to 33, the building housed the Bank of Commerce and had a pedimented overhang on the front. Staff has reviewed this application and recommends approval. Again, this, this, um, these doors are similar to the ones across the street that were approved just earlier today. And um, do you have any questions? I, I did. Um the application, I thought, said that there were angled doors. It says two <coughs> angled storefront entries. Will the angling be maintained? The doors are not angled. Do you, do you 
you have to, you have, if you're, it's not yes, your turn yet. We're, we're still talking at staff, but you need to, it would be good to be over there if you're going to say anything. Um, yeah, it, it says on the front page here on the summary report, it says one story commercial building, two angled storefront entries. Angle on the east side, entry on the east side is angled. Oh, I'm sorry, this is not at this location. It's the entire building. There are some angles further down the street. I'm sorry. Okay. This, this is the area where it's just a straight yes, storefront. Is. Okay. Yes, it is. Questions for staff? Uh, I think we've been approving this um, change in the storefronts, um, which mm -hmm. look very nice. They do look good. That's great. Any questions for staff? No. no. Okay. Um, applicant, would you restate your name? It's uh, Sherry Wendt, 631. Sherry Wendt, 631 Eunice Drive in Tarpon Springs. And um, I have been sworn in. That's all you want. And, and just to add for your a visual, visually understanding, um, this particular storefront, it'd be almost like going across the street and just taking the one that's on Amazing Finds mm -hmm. because it has the double doors, the glass on the sides, the transoms above. So um, the new gentleman that's moving in to this is a, re a restaurant he's also applying for a restaurant grant um, called blazing 28 and he's got a lot of you know wonderful ideas for the inside um, but he loved it what it looked like across the street so they decided to put this here so that's what it will look like it looks to me like there is some inset windows above the doorways as it are, are those what they are, it's um, they're very old transoms that are that are leaking and cracking. Uh, that was going to have to be fixed at some point, but they're they're really like not. It's that they're in placed in wood. They're not really recessed. They're just old and kind of sitting in there. If that makes any sense. But there there will be a transom across this, the same place as there is a transom now, but it's wood. Are those? Older transoms original to the building, or were they replacements? We don't time? know. Um, okay. No one seemed to know, but they're falling out. Mm -hmm. um. City have it. Oh, go ahead. We have no other questions. No, no nothing. Um, is anyone here from the public to speak against this? Is anyone here from the public to speak for this? Um, it, it, I'd like a motion to approve this. I'll make a motion to approve it as submitted. I second the motion. May we have a vote? Ms. Sardoulis. Yes. Ms. Colianos? Yes. Mr. Bolton? Yes. Chairman Root? Yes. All right. That concludes new business. Let's move on to approval of minutes from September 24, um, 14, 2015. Welcome. Thank you. There's, I, the issue I had with the minutes is that it did not reflect any of the discussion with regards to the submitted staff report versus the, the, the analysis work we wound up doing in order to approve the application um, uh, and looking through the criteria for new construction. And I don't know how best to document it, but it shouldn't be left with nothing. We 
can edit the minutes and add that. Um, now that Kim's on board, we'll have the staff that'll have time to actually go through the tape and through the, the discussion that we had because we were on video for that that discussion and make sure that we provide some additional detail for, I'm assuming this is for 120 Reed Street, mm -hmm. that discussion. Yeah. Yes. And is that something that you'd like permanently? Like you always, you want all of the discussions all the time on the minutes? Well, something significant like that, because right now we have no documentation in terms of a staff report for new construction. And what we found is the more detail you can provide, the better. We don't expect a verbatim, you know, um, this isn't a court report. Uh, summary is appropriate. However, if there are significant points and discussions, for example, if we approve certain things, those specific things should be itemized um, like that. Yeah, like and that motion. you're welcome to take a copy of what I had written down to help you with that transcription because I know sometimes this is hard to hard to hear. I think we definitely will if you don't mind before we leave today no, for no, that no, so no, we're very no. clear on that motion. Right um, but those sort of details it's a very very important if we ask um, the applicants for clarification their responses should be recorded here because then it's you know then we have something to go on. We've had instances where we've gone back to the staff reports and there's just not enough detail and the audio on the on the tapes is too poor to really reconstruct the conversation. Okay. So just, you know, best common sense without giving us a Michener novel, right? Okay, no problem. Um, do you have any? Well, I had just two things. One, it's similar to what uh, Chairman Root was saying, and that was there was a not the not a very robust um, documentation of, I was trying to find a couple places where it says and, and Chairman Root asked and it was answered. There was no, like just a quick bullet point or something that tells us or there's a place where it said and uh, Hoffman Architects rebutted many of the points in the staff report. That's all it said, instead of saying they rebutted this, this, and this. You know, it doesn't have to be this long paragraph form, but at least just maybe a, a list. bullet point. The just so we can, easy. yeah. So I found that to be wanting a little bit. And then I had a uh, correction on page six of the um, report where it says board comments, Vice Chairman Bolton asked if the northernmost window was ever flush. And it, I, I believe I was asking if the southernmost window was ever recessed because that's the one that's flush now. And we was were it ever recessed? Was it ever recessed? Was the southernmost window ever recessed? And it's just flip flopped because we were talking about that the northernmost and the middle windows mm -hmm. were recessed and the northernmost one was not. Mm -hmm. And we were trying to decide in my mind whether they should put that back recessed if it ever had been. And so that was what that conversation okay. was about. I have no other corrections. So I'd like a, a motion to disapprove the minutes as submitted with a uh, request for corrections made per staff um, board comment. So moved. I'm sorry, oh. Phyllis, do you have comments? There's supposed um, to be a table. I just There's want to understand your, your yeah, request. You, don't, you would, because they're not wholly inappropriate, I mean, you can still use these, you just want more added to them, just table it till next meeting. Okay. okay. Do we need to vote to table? Yes. Yes. All right. okay. I make a motion that we table the well, minutes. Does Athena have anything to add? Athena, do you have anything to add? I wasn't present, so I didn't. Okay. Second. May we have a vote? Ms. Sardoulis? I don't believe I can vote. Yeah, um, yes, yes. Yes, you can. You can I vote. Can? Yes. yes. Ms. Polianos? Yes. Mr. Bolton? Yes. Chairman Root? 
Yes. And it's time for staff comments. All right. Um, I've cast out a calendar for next year, 2016. Um, yours is the second set in there. This is just a draft. I'd like for you all to take a look at these dates and make sure that they all work for you. If you have any questions or comments, we'll discuss it at the next meeting. But I just wanted to give you a chance to take it home with you and check the dates. We're trying to, uh, our director, Heather, put this together to try and make sure that we're not hitting any of the holidays and uh, days before and days after. So if you want to take this home and review it, and we'll discuss it further at our next meeting. We were trying to we tried to be sensitive this this year a little bit more than we were maybe maybe that was done last year to those holidays mm -hmm. especially those Monday holidays by mm -hmm. pushing meetings back. But if you have any conflicts, this would be a great time for us to fix that before we actually publish that schedule. And that's the first item. Second item. Well, I've got a couple here. Um, First of all, I want to thank all those that attended the presentation from uh, Michael Zibney with the state. It went really well. I did try and send out um, emails. They kept coming back to me. So hopefully you all have gotten a copy of um, the presentation PowerPoint. One of the items discussed uh, was the archaeological survey. There is a grant that we can apply for. So that's something you can probably think about and um, we can bring it up at, a, at another meeting. But just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. What type of grants, if you look at the PowerPoint, there are different types of grants we can possibly apply for. With architectural, I'm sorry, archeological survey spa in the allowed criteria for that. Yes, they do. Well, he seems, um, he emphasized that several times, so I thought that was quite promising. He said that they would be, um, favorable towards archaeological surveys and historic surveys. So. And That's he did guess. mention that if we wanted to look at maybe considering an update of our, um, of our historical uh, inventory, that's something that there is a grant out there that we could also secure and that they would be willing to more than likely fund something like that because those are the types of things that they like to see that those are updated periodically and there's some new technology that wasn't necessarily available when that survey was done that could make it more user-friendly online for folks. Well, that would be fantastic, primarily also because we have the old survey mm -hmm. and we know when that was taken and we can do the new survey and then you can show basically at what rate we're losing our assets. So that might be more persuasive to helping our um, ordinances go through, and et cetera. So I, I, I think that would be fabulous. There were, um, he did mention a grant that does not have to be matching, which was wonderful. And then there are some matching grants, but we can also use in-kind to match those. Okay, so fantastic. Those, there's some options, and like I said, I did send that PowerPoint to you all if you want to take a look at it, and it lists those items that we can do. All right, the last one um, item just kind of came up during this meeting. This is a quasi-judicial meeting, but the members of the board are welcome, and we encourage you to contact staff at any time. We try and get these packets out a week in advance, but if you have any questions, I mean, please contact us. Um, let's discuss it and see what you need. Um, and just a second thought that all applicants are told what they need to bring us, whether or not we get those is another story. But we do try very hard to get that information from them. Um, but like I said before, quasi-judicial, you can't discuss it between yourselves, but please contact staff if you have any questions so we can get those things answered prior to coming to board meeting. A long time ago, when I went through this for my big addition on my house, I was provided with a checklist. I don't know if you have we, that we checklist. We provide checklist well, with the application. And, and in which case, I remember if I didn't have every single thing requested on that checklist, it didn't, it didn't get heard. I mean, they were, it was, 
you know, I was told, look at, you know, unless you have all these items, we can't put it in front of the board. And so I, I would really like to see that we have complete packages here. Um, you know, I'm, I think as a board, we recognize that we need to, to not hold things up, but I feel really uncomfortable with some of the discussions and, um, and, and how these things are likely to be reported. I just, you know, we're, we're kind of on, on shaky ground when we do not have complete packages. Um, you know, I'm glad you caught the one with the, uh, regarding Reed Street tonight. Um, so we didn't have to get into those discussions with the applicant and an audience here. I'm also glad, um, well, I would, have, it, I would have liked to have seen a more definitive um, summary of the changes requested by the second applicant. Now, yeah, they, they can have architectural drawings for concept, but there's no reason why they can't, you know, give us a line drawing or, you know, say exactly what they're going to do. So we don't have to go through the process of trying to record it on their behalf and then miss something. <coughs> or, you know, it gets lost in translation. It just, it's just, it's a bookkeeping nightmare. Um, so uh, hats off. It's a tough job you do there. You're the front line, you know, before it comes here. So we appreciate anything you do to give us the best possible products. And we're really picky about this because we've gone through almost two years before Heather arrived where we were getting really, really poor products to evaluate and we kind of got real vocal about it. So you're seeing our enabled voice. <laughs> And uh, forgive us for, for being insistent, but we really, really need good packages. So um, thank you for, for recognizing that and supporting us. There is one more item, just because mm -hmm. you had asked to be, um, to be made aware of. The demolition ordinance, we do actually finally have another application for planning and zoning board. So we're actually going to have a planning and zoning board meeting this month. So the planning and zoning board, the demolition ordinance will be on that agenda. So if you have an interest, what's the date? That date that? is the 11 16. 16. I was going to say 17, so I'm glad. Cut it out of the paper. <laughs> yes. So that'll be the first step. The next step, once they move it along, provided that I'm assuming that they're going to move it along at that meeting, will be to go to the Board of Commissioners. And I don't know if that'll be in December or if it'll be January. It's just going to depend on what their agendas look like going forward. We have some pretty contentious items at the board going forward. So I don't know how much room there'll be in the, during the holiday season to get that on, but we'll try to move it forward as soon as it, it's recommended to be moved forward by, the, by uh, the planning and zoning board. Thank you for the notification. And we'll let you know also when it gets scheduled for the board of county commissioners. If it, okay. you're not gonna have a meeting for some reason, we'll send you an email and let you guys know what that schedule is. Um, in this case, I knew you were gonna have a meeting, so I wasn't real concerned. Um, and again, that we're trying to move things along as quickly as possible, but the board, that board does not want to meet if there's only one application and it's a staff driven application. They're willing to meet on a single application for an applicant driven thing where it's a, it's going to tie, hold somebody up, but they've asked for staff to, you know, respect the fact that if it's a staff driven initiative, it can wait a month until there's additional applications. So that's why it waited. And, and, we weren't and, not hearing you. It's yeah. just that. We try not to schedule meetings that are unnecessary for board members to attend, being that you are all volunteers. We Thank appreciate that. Thank you for that. recognizing that for the, the boards. Um, is anybody available to attend that meeting? I know I'm out of, I'm out of town. I'm going to put it on my calendar. But oh. It's Monday? I was on my calendar to come to the other oh. thing. Nick, if we have to attend it. Well, I thought it was safe. Okay, that would be great. Yeah. And that meeting is at 7 o'clock, mm -hmm. not 6.30, just so you know. Board of Commissioners and you guys meet at 6.30, but everybody else meets at 7, so. And it'll be in this room, so. Okay. No, this is great. You'll be in this I room until hear. January, more than likely. Um, if we get the project done in the theater, it's going to be sometime in January that we'll still be meeting in this room. And you're still being recorded, and you're live out streaming in on the Internet. So things haven't changed just because we relocated the room. Okay. So if you want to go back and look at the video, it's there. Yeah, we were wondering why we were relocated, but this is, this is fine. This is fine. 
Um, and any further staff? Comments? Nope, that's all that we have. I just wanted to, um, I found the um, Historic Preservation Conference, our speaker, very beneficial. Um, I'm sure you all attend, have attended many of these, but for me it was the first one, and thank you so much for bringing it here. It made it much easier for me to attend, and I, it was, it was very illuminating. It was yeah, I'm very really valuable. sad to have been on a town for that. Um, Speaking of which, uh, the Florida Historic Trust has their big annual meeting they've just announced in May. Um, I don't know, did anybody else hear about that? It's going to be in Tallahassee. And the dates, drum roll please, are 11 to 14. That's the Florida Historic Trust. So I'm hoping to be there for at least the first three days. Um, okay, are we ready to move to board comments? Yes, yes. board comments. Board comments, <laughs> all right. David? Welcome, Kim. Thank you. So yeah. we're glad to have you. And then on the, the applicant with the uh, bathroom addition, will the building permit be issued without a drawing that shows just mm -hmm. what's being done? So it's really not unreasonable for us to ask for the right drawing, right? She will be, sub well, her architect will be submitting a new drawing and he will draw that out and she'll need to have that in order to. It won't be an elevation. What they'll submit is a floor plan rendering. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. it, it's not a rendering in the same type of case of rendering that what you would, you would expect this board to be where you're actually gonna be able to visualize right, it. Right. It would be more of a 2 d drawing where it is laid out you know where the circuitry is going to go how it's right, going right. to be air conditioned that type of thing however it would be clear because the posting and that type of thing would have to be denoted on that plan because it's a supporting structure mm -hmm. so that information would have to be there would have to be engineered so you would get an additional drawing how helpful it would be to your for your needs i don't know i mean i can read a plan view map but that's mm -hmm. not something that you see a lot of. You do see floor plans here. I mean, I've pro provided mm -hmm. you floor plans since I've been here, but we usually provide that rendering too. So I don't know how helpful it would be. Um, it's one of those things that maybe this is one of those applications that we actually follow through the process and bring back to show you what actually comes in. That's something that I can get. So you see what actually comes in for the permitting side. So you can kind of judge what your expectation is for all of these applications. Mm -hmm. Like you totally want to see a rendering and if it, there's the rendering is not there then I'm sorry to the applicant they're going to have to provide that rendering whether it's they draw it out themselves or they hire somebody to do that maybe this is a good one since you're aware of this case and it was such an, an issue that we actually follow it the process when they do finally come in for permitting and let you see what comes in I think the last thing we're gonna do is be put a greater burden on them to have to present but I was wondering if they're gonna have to do something for the permit anyway and it's not really an extra burden. It's kind of different in this case okay. because residential is given, right. if it was a commercial building, the elevations are also right. provided, but you, in a, in a residential structure, the it's not necessary under the floor and building code or our regulations here in Tarpon to provide that elevations. They provide the floor plan, they provide the supporting infrastructure for the posting and that mm -hmm. type of thing. Whether or not that's gonna be just, a, it's displayed differently with different architects, so whether that's gonna be something that you guys are actually gonna be helpful I think I'd like you to see that and you tell me okay. because you can tell me from looking at that once we follow through this process and we'll just put together a little packet kind of when we do at the well, end of the meeting we can just put it on for your information to kind of having look at. a floor plan would have allowed us to know what the side elevation was. Sure. you know whether or not there was a window there exactly what, what this, the windows were, would have had to be yeah, clear identified yeah um, and then um, the last thing I appreciate how complete and the applications have been since you've been here so because um, really we were working with some very deficient uh, documents in the, in the past so and bringing that up I just I, I want to make sure we're we're setting the same standard for every applicant mm -hmm. that and for the public to hear that that listen this is what we expect in every application we're not um, showing prefer preference to one applicant by not making them do that and then forcing another applicant and then we end up in some sort sure. of legal mess. So that's kind of why I put that out there in the on record that we really need applicants to know that they need to bring that because that's what we expect from everybody else. You know, so, I, if, but thank if, you. 
I mean, we probably should have tabled the, uh, the applicant for the cantilevered bathroom just because of the lack of information and the conflicting information that was provided. However, you know, and the, the city manager has been vocal about wanting, not wanting to see us make, you know, cause delays to the application process. But let's, let, let's fix that before it ever gets here. Well, we appreciate you actually giving us comments because I don't know that you guys realize this, but all of the comments that you made before when there were other staff here, I was not pervy to. Yeah, we I walked in the door that. and I got four <laughs> boards thrown at me to go take care of plus the Board of County Commissioners with no staff. So I kind of had to feel, and Michelle is the same way because unfortunately I still have three boards that I have to attend. She's basically attending to your needs and meeting, making sure your packets are together. Yeah. But again, it's a learning curve for her too. So. You know, she's doing the best that she can. We're struggling together. Absolutely. So hopefully in the next six months, we'll see a change. But again, we're working the we're doing the best that we can here to try to do. So we appreciate your feedback because it's the only way we're going to improve because everything that's happened before, me trying to get access to minutes for all five boards is not going to be possible for me to make yeah. everybody satisfied. I just can't and, and meet the needs of the community. Right. Well, our, our so minutes aren't there. worth even yes. looking so. at. We're trying. All right. Okay, so comments? Um, I, I, ha I have a list. I have one last comment. For the record, I'd like to say um, how uh, important it has been and to continue having council at our meetings. Mm -hmm. And I just want to make sure that um, that's on the record and if it ever comes up as a discussion to maybe not have counsel that that would they would understand how important that is to the board for us to have that representation here it, it protects the city i have to completely agree yes strongly absolutely. agree yeah the quality of our hearings has gone up a hundredfold with our attorney okay comments No, we're, we're on board comments. Okay. No. <laughs> um, I was sorry our colleague Cliff Martino is uh, no longer on the board. He was um, just a font of information when it came to Windows, definitely. Uh, so I, I miss him. I, yeah, I had asked if there was any scuttlebutt so we could understand why. Uh, I, he just tendered his resignation. I wasn't privy to his reasoning for that. Usually Jennifer goes to the city manager directly and I don't get the basis other than. Well, th that's okay. I saw him in the park two days ago. Okay. And he spilled. Okay. He dished. Okay. Yeah, he was very, very upset that it's back to the same issue that um, uh, one of our decisions had gone in front of the Board of Commissioners and no one had been notified. That just, so just so you know the severity of this, I'm sure you understand it now. But at this point, four of our five board members seriously contemplated quitting. I didn't know about Cliff, so there was no opportunity, you know. I mean, he wasn't here. He missed a couple of the meetings when we talked about all this stuff. So he was basically in a reactive situation, and we lost him. But it could have been the whole board. I mean, that's the level of severity of that action that was taken. So I just, you know, let's let's not do that again. Let's keep it all very transparent and above board. And um, I think you'll find you have our support where it's warranted. Um, you saw that tonight. Um, and let's 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 move forward as a cohesive unit. All right. Um, Following on that, Cliff gave over 10 years to this board, and I would really like to see a letter signed out from someone in the city thanking him for that time. I can certainly, we can certainly put together a letter thanking him and have it for the city manager's signature. Yeah, I think that's extremely appropriate. Um, 
I have another comment. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be trying. Oh, Do you have something you would like to I, add? Do you have any? No. Okay. I just would like to, um, perhaps I believe it's Michelle that I need to talk with far, further about the archaeological aspect of maybe submitting some type of grant. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've got an opportunity here that I hate to <laughs> not act upon. We'll, we'll look, I'll look into that and talk to Michael Zimney and see if we can get the paperwork started. Right, maybe it can be a, a more comprehensive survey, not only with the archaeology, which also deals with both historic and prehistoric, but um, you know, a, a more comprehensive survey of the entire city, because we have a lot of resources here. I think that you probably need to come in and meet with Michelle and explain your background a little bit more so she has a good good foundation of what's going on because it's very limited, the knowledge base that we have left um, as far as the, what's what's available for in the city for archaeological resources. So I think that would be helpful to kind of help you help scope out mm -hmm. what, the, what, the, what we really want to get and see. Because again, if we don't, if we're not successful this year, we would certainly continue to move forward to ask for that year after year with just refining the scope until we get the right amount of scope that the state can fund. Yeah, and haven't we done grants like this in the past that Dr. Monahan would have? So you would have something well, to. I think base they were on? primarily only historic architecture. They were okay. different. Yeah, this and is a very different, museum, which is very important, but the other has been totally neglected. Yeah, no, we need a we need a archaeological I survey. Agree. We need to know where our stuff is. Yeah, sounds good. And it also needs okay. to be out there for the general public, which it's not available right now. Okay, well, I have I have one comment, um, and that is um, I I one of the individuals who lives near me was replacing windows on their structure this evening. And I stopped and I said, we didn't see this. Have you been, did, did you per get permitted? And he says, oh no, I'm just replacing the window. I don't need a permit. I'm like, yeah, you do. So periodically the city sends around information to homeowners in the historic district with regards to what needs to be permitted, what needs to be put in front of the board, et cetera. I think mm -hmm. it might be time for another mailing. Okay. And also, if you would like to give us that. Unfortunately, at this point, I'm not, I don't, normally I'm really good at reporting what I see, but it she was, is. you know. Well, I we can't to, control if we don't know where to well, send Well, I, I also need to live with, near these people. I understand. So, um, at this point, um, and the bottom line is they, they were replacing old, nasty vinyl. It wasn't like they were taking out the historic build mm -hmm. windows that were there. I mean, if, if they had been there, it'd be a whole different, I'd, I'd be here just shouting. But um, I, I, I told him in no uncertain um, terms that he was putting me in a very uncomfortable situation and I would not tolerate this going forward. So. Um, hopefully you'll see applications. Going he forward. still needs to come in and get a permit because we have to make sure that the, the windows that he did put it meet product approval for the state of Florida. He does need a building permit if nothing else. Um, oh, I, I told so, him that. I, okay. I told him that, but at this point it's up to him. Okay. It's, I'm sorry. I'm, I can just, I'm we can really send the officer that saying. direction if you'd like <laughs> and he can investigate. Well, he's pretty, he, they're, they're in now. I mean, I saw him at the end of it, so I don't know how you'd tell. That's the problem. I'm sure you they know. were installed properly, hmm? hopefully. We well, I don't know that they're installed properly, but they're, they're installed, and so That's why it was because I was watching him finish, doing the finished touches on it, and I'm like, I don't remember seeing this applied for. Well, I didn't, but you, you need to, it's probably. I mean, you should have heard the conversation. Oh, I, I, I told him that would just, you know, he couldn't put me in a position of having mm -hmm. to see unpermitted work because I work with the city. Um, so, I, I, I just, you know, it's mea culpa. Do I, I'm gonna just throw myself at the attorney's feet and say, I hope I don't get in trouble for that. Um, all right, I don't have, oh, welcome Kim. I think the entire board is just really happy to have someone at Thank our, you. Um, that understands what we need or is willing to work with us as we go forward to get our 
then it's in really good shape. And well, the same someone is key, and that's also hasn't yes, been here. The same, so the same we're hoping that key. Kim will stay with our boards for for some some time. So give you some continuity. Yeah. So one more. Oh, you know, I forgot. Yes, I, I apologize. Um, I'll open the floor to public comment. That's supposed to be on our on our agenda. We'll make sure it's happening. Opportunity for public comment. Thank you, everyone. Do you have, are you here for public comment? I didn't recall you standing. No, I didn't. I didn't stand at the meeting. We're right here because I was really disappointed to observe and to learn and um, to be interested in what you guys are doing. Well, thank you. Um, by the way, do you have any applicants for our open board seats? We do not, unfortunately, no. What's the, do they, okay, where are they required to reside? They apply, they have to, they have to, I believe they just have to reside in the city. In and this, in for, to serve the board. They don't have to actually live in the historic district. Is Riverside district. encompassed by the city limits, all of Riverside? I believe so, Drive. yes. There yeah. may be, yeah, yes. Drive, okay, yeah. I have a name for you. Okay. And I'll have her make the application. Yeah, they make application to the clerk's office. So if they could just get in touch with Irene or Michelle, um, they they can get them the application. Uh, Michelle? Not this Michelle, the this the deputy okay. clerk. Got it. The clerk or the deputy clerk. Okay. So I'll put that out to our board members. It's opportunity. It's recruitment time. We got two seats to fill. Okay. Can I have a motion to dismiss? So moved. I don't think we need a vote. How about all in, all opposed, say nay. Pass. Thanks for coming.